All right. Looks like we're live. Let's get into it. So on um, this week's episode, we're going to be talking about your first 90 days as a real estate agent. We thought this one was timely because we know because we're in the trenches every day talking to agents, partnering with agents that there's a lot of agents still getting the business today. Every week, it seems like we're talking to someone else that's getting into the business. So we wanted to provide value today by helping you like, like where do you get started? And the first thing that I think you need to start with when it comes to that is going to be like, what is the goal? I always talk about, you know, if, if you're going to, you know, find the treasure, hit the target, like you got to have a map, right? You got to have a plan. And so many agents just join whatever brokerage they, they, you know, they heard about, or, or maybe they came into their pre-licensing school. So they're, you know, so they go to that brokerage without interviewing and really evaluating a lot of different brokerages. So let's talk about that a little bit today, John. Let's talk about, you know, maybe the different types of goals a new agent could have, whether it be like the type of listing agent they're going to be, if they're going to be a buyer's agent, maybe they want to focus on commercial versus residential, maybe they want to be a leasing agent. A lot of different ways we could go with this, but let's just talk about, you know, in, in our opinions, kind of the goal a new agent should have when it comes to looking at their, their real estate career, and then we'll pivot into what would be a good brokerage for them to partner with. And then we have four other main items, <laughs> four other main items that we're going to cover uh, to help you guys get started in your first 90 days. So, so talk a little yes. bit about, you, you know, when you were a new agent, John, like what was your goal or, or what should their goal be knowing what you know now? Yeah, man. It's like, you don't know what you don't know. So when I first became a real estate agent, you know, I really didn't even know what the landscape looked like. Like, you know, there's different brokerages out there and different brands. Like, you know, why would I go to one versus another? When I started in real estate, you know, I had already determined when I, when I was going for my license that I was going to work for this small independent local real estate company. Uh, my mom was a the secretary there and I knew the owner and it, he was just going to help mentor me and coach me, which is what I felt like I needed. But I really didn't understand what are the options that are available to me because I didn't know what I didn't know. So kind of what you're saying, when I talk to a new agent and I just had this experience happen last week, you know, I got introduced to somebody. They were almost through licensing class and they were like, OK, I want to get into real estate. What do I do? And kind of like what you said, I said, what's your goal? And like, I really want to understand first and foremost, when I'm talking to an agent getting into the business, what is your financial goal? Because if I can understand your financial goal, we can sort of like piece everything else together. But if you come into the business and you're telling me, hey, I'm getting licensed next month and I want to make $250,000 in my first year, that's going to be a very different conversation than if you say, hey, I'm, I'm getting licensed. I was a teacher and I was making $40,000 a year. And I would like to be able to, in my first year, replace that income or get to a point where I'm replacing that income. That's going to be a different conversation. So in, in the example of last week, when I was talking to this new agent, they were in a situation where they wanted to make money, but they didn't need to make money right out of the gate. So that really altered the course of what my, my advice was to them and what options they had to them. And I always like to give people options and pros and cons. Because, you know, certain options could be, AJ, do, do we join a team that's already in the marketplace, already generating leads and opportunities, and you can plug right into that? Yeah, there's going to be a higher fee for that. Or do you build it all from scratch all by yourself on your own, maybe with the help and mentorship of somebody that's at that company that's either going to sponsor you like we do in EXP or a broker that's going to take you under their wing? Yeah. So if we were to kind of break it down, like there's – you know, we're, we're sitting down with a new agent and we can provide them with like a menu of options of like what a goal, good goal could be in terms of like direction. I think that'd be helpful. And I like what you said, like if, if we can figure out what your income goal is, we can reverse engineer all of that and, and build out like a custom plan, both from what brokerage you should join, but also like the generation wise, what type of lead should you be trying to generate? Should you be a buyer's agent, listing agent? So uh, when I got started, I, I really was like, I didn't know what I didn't know. And then where I was like most agents and I just joined the brokerage that, that I had, you know, heard about before getting my license, which was Keller Williams. And the first six months, man, I was like, you know, a coconut floating in the water in any direction. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and man, I, I struggled because of that. And it wasn't until I found the right mentor, 
hired a coach that I was like, you know, I'm going to be a listing agent. I'm going to prospect for sellers. That, that, that's what ended up working for me. So like, so that'd be an option. You could be a listing agent or you could be a buyer's agent. Some kind of just are like, well, whatever falls in my lap. And of course, if you're a listing agent, you'll also work with buyers, but you should have an idea of which one you primarily want to work with because that's going to dictate your lead generation strategy. Right. So, so I think that was a huge agent, I don't think many people come out of the gate and they're like, I'm going to be a bad to the bone listing agent and I'm going to do Yeah, they're afraid. So, so I think that was, that was cool that you chose that. I mean, a lot of agents, I feel like it takes them a couple of years and some transactions under the belt before they make that mental shift of, Hey, there's much more leverage in the listing side. Um, But if you're brand new and you're listening to this and you can find a mentor that can help you do that, you're going to find this business to be a whole lot more fun and exciting and scalable than if you're working with buyers and, and there's nothing wrong with working with buyers. I mean, I made a great career for myself working with buyers out of the gate. Primarily, I would say that my first few years in real estate, I was probably 75% buyers, 25% listings. And the listings were really, like you said, a byproduct of buyers that I worked with. Um, but getting out there and understanding like, okay, what's a realistic plan. If you want to make say a hundred thousand dollars in as a real estate agent, what do you need to do in order to make that happen? And what's going to be your allocation of marketing for listers versus for buyer clients? And how are you going to go about that? And we help people do that all the time. Yeah. So uh, I think through this conversation and the, the points we have today, it, the conversation is just going to open more clarity for you guys. So, so kind of pivoting into brokerage. So be thinking like, do I want to focus more on listings or buyers? Uh, like John said, typically they go for, for buyers just because it's more of a confidence thing more than anything. Um, and then, you know, if you're, if you're thinking, well, in some markets, being a leasing agent or, or working with renters can be somewhat lucrative if you're in like a luxury market. But for most of you watching, you're in a market where they really pay pennies for being a leasing agent. So I would not make that your goal. <laughs> you know, like, so like, the first deal I ever did was a lease in North Carolina and I got paid like 160 bucks. It was a buyer that ended up uh, deciding not to buy. So they ended up going out and find a rental on their own and just put me down as the agent. I got like 180 bucks or 160 bucks. That was my first deal ever. That's, That's not a lot. So, you know, it covered my gas money working with that buyer. So, so don't make that your goal. And commercial, I think commercial, if that's like in your heart, like your passion, like you want to be a commercial agent, great. I believe it's just there, there's more of a, of a blueprint available for residential agents. It's much more predictable, repeatable. You can have faster success and it's more guaranteed. I, I think um, being a commercial agent, oftentimes- it's a shorter sales work, cycle too. Shorter, shorter sales cycle. And it's you, like know, you, most you really got to have the right mentor commercial. from day one in commercial, right? Yeah, I mean, you might- like You need to know somebody. If we say the average sales cycle in residential is- you know, from the time you go under contract with them, call it 30 days, the average on commercial may be 12 months or more because you may not get paid until that, you know, you get that lease in place and that might take a year. Like there's just a longer burn. And, and you know, when I talk to, I have some guys that are in commercial that work with me at EXP and they're very successful, but they say, hey, when we sit down and we interview somebody, they need to have enough money to cover themselves and making no money for the first 12 months. And that's yeah. pretty normal in that side. It does be, tend to be very lucrative if you can make it through that. Um, but it's going to be, you know, a lot fewer deals and a lot bigger ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so let's talk about brokerages a little bit. Um, so this is going to be assuming that you're going residential. I, I've probably talked to over the years, 10, 20 new agents that said they want to be a commercial agent and, and zero of them ever, went successfully down that path. So, so now we're pivoting to focusing primarily 100% actually on if you were to be a residential real estate agent, because I know that's most of your goal. So brokerage, I'm just going to say, I know of two that, uh, and I, and I study this and and I know all the models. So I I know two that I would recommend to a new agent and and the rest is kind of like, why would you even join that brokerage? It doesn't even make any sense. Uh, And those two are going to be my first brokerage I was with, which is Keller Williams. Great company. I enjoyed my time there. I just found a superior model to be for my situation and and for a lot of agent situations is is EXP. So those those would be my two recommendations uh, for for split, for cap, for training, 
for um, EXP specifically now for, for the stock agent equity opportunity and for the revenue share opportunity, multiple streams of income as a real estate agent. Uh, but Keller Williams really does a good job, I think, for, for out of most brokerages for, for training, for, um, for, for culture. Um, so, so those would be my two. Would, would you have more than just e EXP? Because obviously we're both EXP agents, John, so I know that's, that's your number one. But uh, any other ones that you could recommend maybe? Well, I think if you're a new agent listening to this, the first thing that you need to understand is that every brokerage wants you. Right. And <laughs> good point. we're looking at like a career. A lot of times we need to apply for a position and there might be one opening and a hundred applicants. So you're sort of interviewing and selling yourself on why you would be a good person for that role. It's kind of weird when you come over to real estate and you're brand new because everybody's going to tell you that they want you and that you're going to be great and you're going to do great and they're going to want you at their firm. The thing to understand about that is there's a transfer of value happening, whether you know it or not. And the reason that every brokerage wants you and is going to try to get you to join with them is because the brokerage model is, quite frankly, in our industry broke because most brokers provide whatever they provide and nothing more. And you don't really cost them money because they're doing those things for the agents they have already. So if you join that brokerage, it costs them nothing, but you may make nothing as a result. So it's really important that you understand that you're interviewing the broker, not the other way around. And you should be asking things specifically like, if I were to join this brokerage, what can you provide me in the form of training, mentorship, and even more importantly, opportunities, leads? Like, how am I, what's my pathway with you to getting to my first three transactions? If they can't clearly articulate that for you as a new agent, I would be very scared and probably head out the door um, soon thereafter. Now, when you ask me, AJ, like, what would be my two brokerages? You know, obviously I'm at EXP. But before I was with EXP, I was an independent. And I would look at it like in your marketplace, wherever you are listening to this, there's only two options, in my opinion. There's an independent who may have a stronghold on your market, who may still be the dominant player in your market. And there's EXP. I believe in EXP is the number one because I believe you can get all the coaching, training, and mentoring you need for free at EXP with a very low cost and split, very low cap. And you're going to be able to learn how to do the things that you need to do to be successful. And I believe that the training that we have is better than Keller Williams or any other company. And I've been with Keller Williams too. So they have a good training program, as you said, AJ, but it's not as good as EXPs. And we could dive into particulars of why that is. Um, I'd be happy to do that with anybody interested. But I believe that if there's a strong independent in your market and you need to make money today and get your name out today, you may find it a quicker path to success in your first three transactions with them. The caveat to that is you're going to really pay for that. You're probably going to be on a 50, 50 split. You're going to have no upward um, trajectory. You're going to have a glass ceiling above you. You may get, you know, the last spoils of the leads and opportunities that come through, meaning they're going to give them to their top agents first. They're more seasoned agents second and their new agents last. So, you know, for me, EXP is a shortcut around all of that. While it may be a benefit to you out of the gate to be with them, I think it was going to hurt you and slow down your ultimate long-term success moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting take on it with the, the, the major player, maybe being an independent brokerage uh, as an option. I, I like that too. And that, that made me think really like the other question that a lot of new agents probably have is, is team or no team. John, you ran a very successful team. And, and I think for a lot of new agents, that's a great option. You want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're coming out of a career where you were getting a weekly paycheck and you're getting into real estate and you're nervous about bridging the gap between your last paycheck and your first commission check, I say you go team all the way. If, if you took every dollar I had away from me, you couldn't take away my knowledge. And if you drop me in any market in the U.S. and I had to provide for myself and my family, knowing what I know, having run teams at a very high level, if I was brand new in a new market, I would join a team and I would join the best team who's got the most robust lead gen platform who can show me what their plan is for distributing those leads to their team members. And I would look for an opportunity where the distribution was fair, where the opportunity was visible and tangible and the coaching and mentoring was available. 
I would join that team, even though it's probably going to cost me 50% of my commission, because it's not about the commission split as much as it's about getting those deals and making income. So that would be the easiest and fastest way to bridge the gap between my last paycheck and my first commission check. And you're not going to start from scratch putting all those pieces into place in order to generate the leads that then have to be converted into clients that then have to be sold a home and go under contract. You're not going to do that as fast by yourself, even with all the right steps in the right order that we can coach and mentor and train you to, then you could by joining an existing team where those leads are already coming in today. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. Let's pivot now to, to really like, like budget, establishing a budget. Cause now that you've kind of set your goal, let's just say, for example, the agents, you know, their goal is hundred K. So we'll kind of use that as a baseline moving forward, hundred K in their first year. I think that's, you know, really the goal that most agents set. They're like, man, I just want to make hundred K my first year, which is a, a, a really a massive goal for a first year agent. You know, that's double. It's, it's almost like double and a half, what the average agent makes their first year. I think the average agent in North America makes like 38 or $42,000 a year. So not a lot. So hundred K is a big goal, but with our mentorship, you know, we, there's no doubt we can get you there as long as you're willing to do the work. So it's like, what would your budget be? Yeah, exactly. Guaranteed. Um, we'll get you there. If you guys decide to partner with us, uh, link in the description, but, uh, of course, of course you gotta do the work, <laughs> but, uh, but we can talk more about that if you guys decide to book a discovery call with us. So, so now that we have your brokerage, we have your goal established. Let's talk about like budget. Cause, cause this is going to set the framework for what type of lead generation they can be doing. So if, if you decide to go the team route, you're not going to need a budget. So that's a great option. If you have zero budget and you also want some, maybe some handholding and John and I and Lars, we work with teams all across North America in Canada and the U S so if you decide to partner with us at EXP, we have a vast network of teams that we could help get you placed on those teams to, to get to help you out as a new agent if you decide to go that route. So reach out to us on that. But let's just say you your heart's set on being an individual agent. That's the route I went initially. And then I started my own team eventually. But it's like, what is the budget? Because there's there's ways to generate free leads. You know, those tend to take a little more hustle, a little more work. Um, but then there's also paid leads that can get you to a deal pretty quick without having to sift through so much dirt to find that gold. So I, I guess let's talk a little bit, John, first, uh, someone who has no budget and then someone who has, say, maybe 500 bucks a month in budget to put towards their marketing. So, so talk about some, some free ways someone can get started as an individual agent. So I think or, if I'm going to do this very topic. low cost. Or very yeah, low I think if I'm going to do this topic justice, like I always want to give advice that's going to keep people safe and on a and on a proven path. Um, so for me, it's simple. It's it, it's if you have no budget, then you're really an outlier, and you're going to need to get with somebody who's devised a system that's going to provide a bridge between your last paycheck and your first commission check. When I ran a team, we would do that. We'd bring people out of the service industry, the car industry, and we would say, hey, I know you're used to getting paid every day, but over here, it's going to take a minute to get paid. So we're going to have to get you up to speed. You're going to have to do a deal, and then you're going to have to wait for that deal to close. So we would put people on a draw. So if that's you, that's okay. If you have no money and no budget, I think you need to find a team and you need to be on some kind of a draw. I'm not going to advise that you go out and live on credit cards or do anything dangerous like that. Go find a team that'll put you on a draw and then you guys can work that out. So that's first and foremost. If you come into this and you say, hey, I have a limited budget, a limited budget would look like probably $2,500 to get started, which is going to be your real estate classes fee. It's going to be your upfront MLS fee to get access to the MLS, which you're going to need to get your lockbox key, your basic requirements to being a licensed realtor. And that's before you even choose what brokerage you're at. And then I think you're going to need 90 days of runway, meaning 90 days of whatever your monthly bills are. You have to have that set aside to get started, unless you're going to have somebody bridge that gap for you. So if you're going to do that and you have 90 days and that's all you have is 90 days plus 2,500, then I think you need to join a team, whether you want to or not. If you're going to do it independently, like you're suggesting, AJ, I think to be safe and wise and really plan for success, I think you need six months of runway plus the $2,500.
So if your household bills, your car payment, your rent, whatever is say 3000 a month, then you need 18,000 plus 2,500. And, and that's being real. And maybe you can get that from a family member or borrow that, what have you. But I think that's really giving you a correct expectation. Now, on top of that, if we're going to have a marketing budget, which is what we're talking about, and even if that marketing budget is $500, you know, I, I would tell you to do what I did, which is go after low cost to no cost leads. And I would pursue expired and visible marketing, which I know you can speak a lot to AJ because you really excelled at that in your career. I would also do open houses for people and I would get out there and I would promote myself online and you have to have some kind of a lead gen platform in order to get them the access and the properties and manage them. Um, good thing is at eXp, you get that for free as part of your monthly technology fee. Um, and you're going to get a platform that's going to allow you to grow your business. Yeah. Yeah. Good advice. Uh, I'll, I'll take it a slightly different way. If I think the, the concept of having your living expenses in the bank, if you're the sole income earner for, for you or for your family it is a must you need to have, you know, you don't want to be stacking, say, three, four K a month for living expenses on a credit card while you're trying to get launched in real estate. Uh, I heard someone say, it might have been my first broker. He, he was like, or maybe my first real estate coach, but they're like, basically, you know, the, the idea of saving a year, like a year living expenses. And I hear some new agents say, like, I'm not quitting my job and going full-time in real estate until I have a, a full year of living expenses set aside or, or even six months, I, I think is is maybe a lot um, before you quit your full-time job. Because I feel like so many people just kind of like, like, I guess, quit real estate when they're part-time agents before they ever make the full transition over. There's certainly uh, exceptions for that. I, I know I just see a lot of agents when, when real estate really is their plan B because they have, still have a full-time job that's taken the majority of their time and energy, then they never succeed with their, their real estate career. But uh, if, if you were looking to get started, like day one, individual agent, you had, a, uh, say, 90 days living expenses in the bank. So, so the, back to the mentor real quick or my, my original broker or coach, whatever. Uh, they said, once you get to the end, so basically you're not really working that hard until that 90 days is up or that 180 days is up and your savings is depleted. Then your back's against the wall. Then you start making the lead generation calls and prospecting. And so your true. business starts to take off. You know, it's like. It, it was, that was true for me too. It was like after six months of like not really going all in uh, and I saw like savings being depleted. I saw, I saw not, not a very bright future. I was like, okay, the time is now let's go. So, so if you're like, all right, the time is, is now let's go then. And you have a zero budget aside from what you're paying for living expenses. I'd be like, I, I would go so hard on open houses and, and door knocking. So open houses for other agents in your market, maybe other agents in your, your office or, or at your brokerage, and then just door knocking for uh, expireds for sale by owners. You can find both those on the MLS. You don't need to pay anything for that because you already got, you're already paying for the MLS. And then also when you're doing open houses, you can door knock all the houses around that open house, let them know that you're doing an open house. So they see you're actually working you know, more than just sticking a sign in the yard and you can say, Hey, by the way, come by, check it out. And by the way, w when do you plan on selling your home? And they might say, well, actually, you know, what? we're actually thinking about doing that uh, this summer or, or whatever. So, so those would be absolute free ways. You can also get buyer leads from Facebook groups, but you do need a platform like John mentioned through eXp. Uh, it's, it's including your monthly costs. So, so you can do that. We have landing pages and all that that are included. So you can make a landing page post properties in Facebook groups, like online garage sale type groups. And there's, there's training inside our brokerage every week live on this type of stuff. Uh, so those are absolute free leads. And then if you got a little budget, I always say get something like Red X and then just start calling, hitting the phones, Fizbo's expired. So I was able to go from selling just six houses my first year. Somehow I got rookie of the year at Kelly Williams selling six houses made pretty much no money. And then <laughs> my next year I sold 36 houses as, as an individual agent. And that was all because expired uh, prospecting mixed in with some Fizbos. So, so just yes. figure out that budget for you. Super good stuff, man. Like, you know, it's easier to look back, right. And, and say, this is what we did that led to success. And we kind of like skip over all the gaps of 
times that we were not successful. Oh, yeah. I remember when I first moved to Charlotte and I was a part-time agent and I had two other jobs in addition to real estate and I was trying to make it work. And it wasn't really until I went to a, um, a conference and I saw people that were just having success that was mind blowing to me. And that's when I went all in, burned my boats, got rid of my other two jobs, joined Remax. Now on top of having no money, I had a $1,200 a month Remax bill that I had to pay and I was all in. And I was like, I have to make it. And something magical happens when you put your back against the wall, like you were saying. Um, and I just had to make it happen. And I remember a, a property came on the market and it was an expired. It was a, no, it was not expired. It was a new listing. It was during the recession. So it was a foreclosure and it was a house that had sold for like 800 and some thousand, like 12 months before. And it was on the market for 501,000. And I was like, man, this is the hottest property on MLS right now. And I'm going to find a buyer for it. And I literally called everybody that I knew. And I, I told them, I said, I said, hey, I know you're probably not in the market to buy this home because all my friends were like, you know, barely renting homes, maybe buying first time home buyer types of houses, not $500,000 houses. I said, but you've got to know somebody that wants this. You grew up here, you know, people. And through that approach, I found. Um, a friend of mine who had a dad who lived an hour away, who was looking to buy something in our market that was a good deal. And I got him over to look at that house and we closed on it. And, and literally it, it kept me alive for another few months. Nice. Uh, but it's, it's stories like that, that I hear over and over and over again, you've got to be urgent and excited about what you're doing. And you've got to look at the market and become an expert. So kind of what baffles me sometimes when I'm talking to agents that are brand new or just getting started is, they want to go from brand new and just getting started to like comfortable and cozy as like, you know, an agent that's humming along. And I'm like, you have to become the expert first, even if you're brand new and you don't have to sell a lot of homes to become the expert. You just have to be informed and know the market like nobody else. So job number one is what market are you working in? What market are you serving? And do you know everything about that market? Because knowledge is free. There's plenty of tools out there. There's resources. There's information. But you've got to study your market. And if you don't have a bunch of clients in your house, you should be out pretending that you have clients. So if the average sale price in your market is 350000 to 400000 you should know what the top five properties are at any given point. And you should have gone to those properties and previewed them and be able to speak intelligently about them. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get an opportunity to, to get a client. And that client doesn't care that you're brand new and they're not going to buy a house just so you can get paid. They're only going to buy a house if they're confident that you can lead them through that transaction and that it's good for them. And how can you do that if you're not informed? So I think that the market knowledge coming out of the gate is probably more important than the right tool, the right system, the right this or that, because you can have the right tool and right system. And if you get on the phone with somebody and you can't communicate excellence and expertise, it doesn't matter if you have the lead, you're never going to convert it. So get out there and really know the market and roll up your sleeves and do the work so that you can become an expert in that area that you serve. And then when you're an expert, you'll be able to generate the, the lead and get the client. Yeah, great, great point. And, and another way to demonstrate that is when you're going to, to preview those houses, so you're, you're familiar with the, the, the best listings in your market, the inventory, you can just do a little Facebook Live as, as you're getting out of your car or you're in your car. Hey, I'm checking out 123 Main Street today. Excited to see this one. I checked the MLS this morning and this one just came on the market right now. To me, it's the best deal in XYZ neighborhood. Uh, so here's the front. If you want to if you want to check it out for yourself, just shoot me a DM. And it doesn't really matter what you say. What you're doing is you're demonstrating to all the people that follow you on Facebook that you're connected with and, or Instagram. You can do hashtag, you know, where we used to sell like Norman or whatever. And, and people search those hashtags. They're just primarily it's for your friends and, and your family. They're seeing you now as a successful agent because, you know, they don't necessarily say, well, that's not their listing or they're not even with a buyer. They just see that you're active in the market. So now when you reach out to your friends and family, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's, a, it's an easier conversation. They, they don't see you as the person that was just banking groceries you know, your local grocery store, you know, two years ago, because you're a college student, they start to see you as someone who has market knowledge, someone who's professional, someone who's out there hustling. Um, so, so to pivot to the next thing, I want to talk about coach and mentor, John. So this is really crucial. You talk about, you know, the unsuccessful side that we don't necessarily talk about all that much. 
man, my first year, I wasted so much money on leads. And, and if, if you're not following a coach or a mentor and, and you know the money you're spending for a certain platform, lead generation system or leads is actively working for, for somebody else or, or for lots of other people, don't buy it. Whenever someone reaches out to me that's uh, partnered with me at EXP and they're like, what do you think about this company? They just called me and they say they can get me 10 listings, 10 listings uh, appointments to go on a month. I'm like, no, don't do it because zero times has that ever been successful for any agent. Uh, I wasted money on realtor.com. It can be good in some markets, in my market and the specific product that they were selling because realtor.com or Zillow may have different products. They may change those over time. I spent, I think, $5,000 my first year, which it was probably on a credit card. Uh, on realtor.com leads. And I got like three leads. Nothing else came in over a six month period. It was a six month contract. And then there was this thing called kazoo that I spent money on. But if I had the right coach, coach or mentor and I was coachable, I could just said, Hey coach, what do you think about spending money on realtor.com? They'd say, well, what's your income goal? Do you want to be a listing agent or a buyer agent? I'd say listing agent. They'd say, well, then don't buy internet leads for buyers. Uh, what's your budget? Well, you're gonna put 5,000 on a credit card and it's a contract. You really think that's smart. So I would have just avoided a lot of uh, pain and cost early on in my career. So the importance of a good mentor and coach, and these can be free or paid, you know, me and John being great friends, we, we believe the, the, when you pay, you pay more attention. So we, we believe in paid coaching, but I mean, what do you think, John, a, a new agent who's not on a team, you know, being on a team for the most part takes care of the coaching and mentoring. If you're on the right team, if you're not on the right team, you're, you're, you're not going to get what you need and, and then you'll need a coach or a mentor, but what would be a way that you'd recommend someone gets a, a free mentor off the bat if they were to um, join a brokerage outside of a team? So let's talk about free mentor first and then let's go into paid coaching. Yeah. I mean, look, any, any mentor is going to be great for you because you have a destination in mind. And when you can communicate that to your mentor or somebody who's been in the business and done it already, they're going to be able to create the most direct line between where you are and where you want to be. If you try to figure that out on your own, there's zero chance that you're going to make it in a straight line. You're going to go down dead ends. You're going to waste time and you're going to waste money. So having that person be your guide even if it's a free guide, is going to be amazing. And they're going to be able to help you understand things like this. Let's be a little bit more tactical. So let's say you're, you've got a lead gen platform and they're advertising that you can spend money to get leads. Well, that sounds great, right? You want leads because you want clients and you want closings. But if you don't have a correct expectation of what those leads are and what the conversion rate in the industry is, you might be spending $500 a month to generate 20 leads and you might not understand that those types of leads are going to convert at 1% industry wide, which means that you might get 20 leads and convert nobody. And you might have to do that five months in a row, i.e. spend $2,500 to get one piece of business. And that would be normal for that lead source. That's what a mentor can help you understand. When the flip side is you could spend $40 to promote somebody else's listing on your platform and generate 20 leads on that same $40 spend that you were spending fifty to uh, $500 over here. And the leads that you get from that $40 spend will actually convert at a 5 to 10% rate instead of a 1% rate. You're not going to know that when you're new. Those are things that a free mentor can help you. When you transition from free to paid, what you typically find is that you get accountability. Meaning if we're in a free relationship, I'll tell you what the path looks like and I'll tell you what the best plan of attack is. But if you actually want somebody to hold you accountable to making sure that you execute on that plan, you're probably going to have to pay for that level of accountability. So when I think free, I think direction. When I think paid, I think action. Like who's going to hold me accountable to the actions that are going to get me to my destination? And for a lot of us, myself included, that really works for me. Yeah. That's a great way to look at it. I never quite looked at paid coaching that way as that's like when the accountability piece comes in, I, I see, I see so often because, because I've, I've coached agents in the past for free part, part of uh, our partners and, and we still do coaching, but it's more, Hey, here's the path. It's not the accountability piece because accountability piece, it, it, it's, it's a lot for both the person holding you accountable and you being the person accountable. It, it's, it's a, it's a pretty intense, intense relationship and both parties need to be extremely committed. Um, 
So when, when I try to do it on a free basis, the, the person that wanted to be accountable, they just said they wanted to be accountable, but they really didn't. And they had no skin in the game. So they, they wouldn't track their numbers. They wouldn't hit their numbers. And then like after like three weeks of them not reporting their numbers, it just kind of fell apart. As soon as it transitions to paid, it's like they're showing up, they're hitting their numbers, they're taking listings. One of the, one of the cool things that I like about EXP specifically as a brokerage is that we have a really a mentorship type program already built in. And we do have a, a formal mentorship program for our new agents where you get a local mentor and all that. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about when you decide to join EXP, like you could partner with, with us at EXP, we'd be your sponsor but I look at that as we're kind of like, we're really your mentor. We're going to mentor you at eXp for free. And myself, John and Lars, we've all been very successful selling houses. We've been very successful coaching other agents. So, and we blur those in the industry. I think, I think what eXp, when you really boil down to why have we grown so fast and been so successful, it's because they got the compensation for contribution correctly aligned where we actually blur the lines between free coaching and paid coaching, because we're doing a lot of things that you would only get from a paid coach because of the contribution and compensation factors at EXP. So if we sponsor you, we're going to actually dig in and go the extra mile that you would not normally get in a free coaching environment. Like, Hey, there's a lot of free, great coaching on YouTube, but they're not going to hold you accountable. But because of the compensation model offered at EXP, we roll up our sleeves and we do some of that work with you that you wouldn't otherwise get. Now we still, you and I both believe in paid coaching and we believe there's another level. And when you start to pay, you'll pay more attention and you'll, and you'll actually get to your results faster, which is why I personally have had a coach um, for the last gosh, 14 years uninterrupted. And I still have a coach to this day that I pay every month because my goals are more and meaningful enough to me that I want to make sure that I achieve them and when I pay to achieve those goals through the mentorship and somebody holding me accountable, it propels me forward and, and increases the rate at which I hit those goals. Yeah, exactly. So, so to be really clear, it's like us as your sponsor at EXP, EXP is paying us to help you be a successful agent and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Like let's just say you're at XYZ brokerage, you're on a 70-30 split, meaning the brokerage takes 30% of all your commissions. They keep it all. At EXP, we have a very low split, 80-20 with a cap. I don't want to get too in the weeds there, but it's a very low-cost brokerage to be at. EXP says, hey, good job, AJ, for sponsoring this agent, for getting them to join EXP. We're going to give you a small sliver of the money they pay into us as the brokerage to, for you to help coach them along. So it's, it's really the truest win for the agent, win for us as the mentor sponsor, and win for the brokerage. Uh, so now that we really covered, you need a good coach, you need a good mentor. Um, I want to really pivot into like the daily schedule piece of it. So now you're working with a mentor, you're working with a coach and, and your, your mentor could be like your broker. However, oftentimes it's not, I love what you said, John, like the, the 1%, like go to your, go to when you're interviewing brokerages, just ask them if I were to start buying internet leads, pay-per-click internet leads, what should be my expected conversion rate. And if they don't say, I'll just, I'll give them a range to give them a little bit of, you know, a grace, a grace range, I guess. If they don't say like one to 3%, like 3%, if you're like an absolute rock star, uh, but really it's 1%. If they don't say like one to 3% and they, and they look at you like a deer in the headlights, like just be like, okay, thank you for your time. <laughs> you know, just you leave. They're, yeah. They're not the right mentor for you. Cause they, they don't even know. Like, and, and it's because if they don't know that, they don't know the conversion rates for all the other types of leads that you should be um, or, or that you may want to be pursuing. So, uh, so, you, so you got your mentor, you got your coach, daily schedule. You want to start crafting this with them. I, I learned early on in my career, if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. So you need to actually have like, you know, I went back old school again. I always found uh, myself more successful by just having an old school. This is like five bucks on Amazon. You know, it's just every day is laid out 15 minutes. Like if you don't have your schedule pre-planned for the entire week with income producing activities, you're setting yourself up for failure. Every day you should have two to three hours of, of lead generation, like in the morning when you're fresh. I used to put in, in pencil because sometimes you might have to erase and, and put it somewhere else in, but I would have like 
already set in my schedule, my listing appointments. I didn't have any listing appointments yet, but I had the time available where I was going to go on them. And if I didn't have an appointment during that time, I could go preview more properties like John mentioned. I could prospect more or I could just go home. You know, it, it was, it was, my, it was my time. If, if I was caught up on my goals, I could just go home, go to the gym, whatever. But uh, schedule is so important. And I find that so many agents get their license because they want freedom. I got my license because I wanted freedom. But what I've discovered, what I learned really quick is that freedom comes from discipline. Freedom comes from discipline of following your, your daily, weekly schedule and, and most people miss that and they fail miserably because of it. Uh, John, what do you want to add on, on that? I mean, when, when, when somebody comes to me and we, and we get on this topic, it's like, look, man, you're coming out of a job. You're coming out of a career. You've been working full time to build somebody else's freedom. I expect you to work full time to build your own freedom. You might even want to work more than full time. But this idea that you're going to go from working full time towards somebody else's freedom to working part time for your freedom is a misalignment of understanding here. Because the reality is, you know, if an agent gives us 10 solid hours per week of prospecting, they'll make more money than they can ever imagine. The question is, can they do that consistently over the long term? Because Angela Duckworth in her book, Grit, says, you know, enthusiasm is common, endurance is rare. You know, you're excited about this career in real estate. You're excited about what the possibility are, but you treat it like a hobby. So if you'll come in and you'll have you know, a solid schedule and you'll pre-plan those time blocks out in advance and you'll treat your prospecting time blocks like you would an appointment where you're in somebody's house for a listing appointment. Like when you're at a listing appointment, you're in somebody's house, you're not changing your laundry. You're not checking your phone. You're not, you know, going for a bike ride. You're there present with them. That's what you have to treat your prospecting like. And when I think of all the greats that I've ever known in real estate, They treat their prospecting time, whether they're selling 10 homes a year, 100 homes a year, or 1,000 homes a year, they treat their prospecting time like coveted appointment time. Yeah. Yeah. And I always would say to a new agent, too, it's like if if you treat just your prospecting time, that, that one time block that's blocked off in your calendar with a permanent marker or a highlighter, I like green, green for income producing activities, just like a green box from like 8 to 11 every day. If you just treat that time block with that laser like focus and you just, and if you had no appointments that afternoon and you just went home, played video games, went to the gym, walked the dog, whatever you'd like to do, you're going to be so busy very quickly with appointments and you'll be kind of forced to do that afternoon activity, like forced in a good way. Cause you want to be, you know, making money, but it's the agents that like, they just like get up and they start like posting on Facebook or, or making a, a business page for their, you know, on Facebook for their, their, their business. It's like, or they're, they're just like, Oh, I'm going to do a few stories and I'll get business or, you know, I'm going to go to this little uh, networking event at this local coffee shop with, with, you know, four other business owners. Like, it's like, guys, like th- this, like what we're talking about is like the path to yeah. double, triple your salary within one to two years. It's, it's really, it's the secret sauce do, and they don't do what they need to do, which is why it's so important to have an accountability relationship with somebody that's going to get you to do those things that you want to do. Uh, our buddy Lars says it all the time, and he's been very successful in, in multiple different businesses. And he says all the time, he says, I've never been successful in any business without an accountability partner to this day. So yeah. it's like if somebody who's a high achiever within the industry says that, how much more if you're brand new looking at this? Like, and, and the reality is most brokers aren't willing to do that. They don't want to do that. That's not their model. So you got to get aligned with people that are going to not only show you the path, but they're going to be there to hold you accountable so that you do the things that you don't want to do when you don't want to do them to get the things that you want and to have the life that you want to have. Um, and anything possible in this industry, which is why I love it. Uh, it's changed my life. Um, it's given me freedom beyond anybody in my family. Um, but it required a lot of discipline and hard work to get there. Yeah, that's, that's the truth right there. So uh, let's talk a little bit about like expectations in your first 90 days. Like maybe how many clients they could expect to have, how soon could they expect to close their first deal? How much money could they make in the first 90 days? Uh, really the stuff that we talked about so far should, should really be established in the first really 
two weeks probably. You know, we first talked about establishing your goal. You know, you can do that on day one. We talked about which brokerage you should join. You could vet out three or four different brokerages in your first week. We talked about finding the right coach and mentor. That could happen in week two. That week, that same week, you could establish your schedule and set your budget with that coach. So all that should be done pretty quickly. You know, don't wait 90 days to figure all that out. Just cram that in, in in two weeks, ideally. And then once you have that daily schedule, you have your lead generation source that you're going to pursue figured out. You really just got to you know stick to that path for the next, say, 60 days, 75 days to wrap up your first 90 day cycle. But, uh, you know, in your experience, John, and, and what you've helped other agents accomplish, what do you think would be reasonable expectations in terms of maybe how many listings they could take, how many buyers they could close and, and how much money they could make the first 90 days? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And in, in my model, you know, I looked at success as, hey, we got you one closing in your first 90 days because with our average sale price, that was often, you know, even one closing was providing more money uh, in a monthly basis than that they would have been getting from their job um, to upwards of three closings. To be realistic, expectations for my market in North Carolina, if they had more than three closings within their first 90 days, that was like a grand slam home run, like standing ovation from the crowd. Like it's happened, um, but it's super rare. And I think there's certain things that are outside of your control. Like you can't control the inventory and the market conditions in your market. You can operate around those market conditions and find the opportunity in any market but, you know, if you're strictly going after a listing opportunity in a market where the average days on market is over 100 days, like when I started in the recession, you know, hey, you might get a listing, but it, when's it going to close? You might have to do price reductions over the next three months to get it to where it needs to be to get it to close. So these are just different factors that you can sort of prepare for, but ultimately they are still going to be factors so I think, you know, if you're joining somebody that's existing and they have all this stuff working and they can plug you into deals and opportunities um, right out of the gate, you're going to get to the money quicker. Um, but if you're brand new, like you said, you can set these things up. Somebody can help you put the right basics and principles and foundational components in place in a short period of time. And then you can start working your prospecting to those systems that you've set up and you can expect to have one or three closings in your first 90 days. Yeah, I agree with those numbers. And the best way to look at it is like, hey, let's close one to three deals my first 90 days, but really have the mindset like this is I'm laying the foundation for my business. Like this is this is the foundation that I'm going to lay that's going to establish my real estate career. And by the end of 90 days, you should have very like it should, it should be, it, you're, the opportunity of that you're pursuing and, and how it's going to play out over the next nine months to wrap up your first year should, should be so tangible meaning you've, you've spent this first 90 days building your pipeline. So although you may just have taken, say, anywhere from, you know, one to, you know, who knows, six listings your first 90 days, and but they're not yet sold, right? Because you got average days in market, and they're probably not closed because of the longer buy, uh, selling cycle for listing, but you have some listings. And maybe you're working with a couple buyers, maybe you closed a couple buyers, but you have all these opportunities that are just, you know, in your pipeline, ready to close, ready to list with you. And, and more than anything, you just have the confidence that you know what you're doing, that you know you're on the right path. And as long as you keep pursuing what you've learned so far, leveling up your skills, continuing to be coachable with your with your mentor or, or paid coach, that you're going to just crush your first year goal of 100K plus. Yep. Uh, that's, that's what I would be looking for as a new agent. Like at the end of 90 days, do I know without shadow of a doubt that I'm on the right path and that I'm building a, a sales pipeline because re real estate does have a longer sales cycle to most sales careers. And, and I feel like, man, so many new agents in 90 days, they don't have that feeling at the end of 90 days. They feel like they're still at day one. They still have no direct path to closings. They're still, you know, messing around social media you know, thinking about maybe reaching out to their sphere to, to tell them they're in real estate, but they're too afraid because they don't know what to say, they don't know what to send, they don't know what to text, they don't know what to email, and they're, and they're just spinning their wheels. Um, but man, the, the agents that we, grow, that we work with after 90 days, they, they feel like, okay, I have the right mentorship, I'm on the right path. So if, if you guys want to partner with us at EXP, there's a link in the description, check it out. 
fill out the form, get on our calendar. We'd love to chat with you. Uh, man, real estate is such a rewarding career when you do it right. <laughs> it can also be a career that really burns you out if you do it wrong. But the financial reward that, that can be attached to the career and then the financial freedom that can come from it when you have the right mentorship in terms of creating residual income so you can eventually get off that next hamster wheel. New age, you're a new agent watching this right now. If you if you stayed this long with us, like you're still you're you're hoping just to get in the rat race of selling houses. Yep. The next step, which we figured out, is how to get out of that rat race and then pursue your your true dream lifestyle. So reach out to us. We got to go. John and I are hopping on another call to help coach some agents right now. So we got a jet, but uh, reach out to us. We'll talk to you guys next week. See you guys.